It was okay to sell all the products that Snoop endorsed. Those are all over the store, on the aisles everywhere. Those products are owned by majority corporations. But when you had a product that was black owned, a black business, they put it in the back of the storeroom. It was okay to sell all the products that Snoop endorsed. Those are all over the store, on the aisles everywhere. Those products are owned by majority corporations. But when you had a product that was black owned, a black business, they put it in the back of the storeroom. Message. Welcome back to the podcast. Beloved, this is indeed your brother, Big VJ, checking in. Today's conversation, we're going to talk business. Um, we're going to talk black entertainers and business. We're going to talk history, right? Because I think it's very important that we marry history up with the present. And then last but not least, we're going to talk about the devil. Right, we're gonna talk about our open enemy, and uh, let me just take the time to clarify what I mean when I say devil on this platform. Right, devil is not a spooky word; it's not a ghostly word. It only means adversary. Right, the original man and woman have an adversary on this planet and that is the so-called white man beloved the so-called white man is not a devil beloved he is the devil right we totally understand that many of our people been underneath the tutelage of pork chop and Reverend pork chop is all around the country if not the world teaching black and brown people that the devil is under the ground he is some energy floating around. I don't know. He's in Earth somewhere. He's in space somewhere. He got a hidden kingdom. He's a prince of darkness and all of those so kind of <laughs> all this kind of spooky stuff that he give our people. And what that does is it blinds us from seeing the devil on top of the ground, the mischief maker himself, right? Once a man or a people group get a thousand years of recorded history about their deeds, they are who they are, right? So history is what we must stand on, beloved, because we had a wise man that came amongst us and he said that of all of our studies, history is best qualified to reward our research. And when you see that you've got a problem, all you have to do is examine the historic method used all over the world by others who have similar problems. And just take their solution and use it as your own. Right? So, like, when you come here, I'll be like, beloved, you ain't really got to be smart. Because we're going to read an article in a minute. And you're going to see, we're going to do a lot of plug and play. And it's like, you know, you ain't really got to be smart. Your brother VJ, I ain't the smartest brother on the planet. All you really got to do is just listen to the words of your ancestors and your elders that are living. And I can submit to you, beloved, everything will be fine. Right? Your ancestors. Not looking all to the east to try to figure out. What the desert rats got going on with their war deities and their war gods. You have a nature of freedom, justice, and equality, beloved. You do. Your enemy have a nature of corruption and disproportion and captivity. So if I see you around him in any relationship structure, personal or business, I know what he's bringing to the table. 
I know what you're bringing to the table. And I know what he's bringing to the table. And he is always going to bring captivity to the table. Meaning, you're going to be underneath him. He's going to fix it that way. And then in his dealings, it's going to be filled with corruption. In his dealings, it's going to be filled with disproportion. And I don't want you to feel bad. It's not just you. Because I don't want you to think you're the unlucky friend or guest. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he's just dumping. Up. No, no. He All around the planet, wherever he goes, he takes his nature with him. So the Australians or the aboriginals of Australia can testify to what I'm saying. He took his show on the road over there. He introduced the indigenous people to captivity and disproportion and corruption. Central Africa, he took it there. South Africa, East, West, North Africa, he took it there. South America, Central and North, he brought it here. To the islands, he brought it here. It's not just you. It's, it's, it's his nature. I don't want you to think his, this is his nature. I also don't want you to think you can save him, preach him, uh, deliver him out of his nature. You can't lay hands on the squirrel and pray that the squirrel stop being the squirrel. It's the squirrel's nature. You can't pray over termites and pray that the termites won't eat the wood. And No, <laughs> it's the termites' nature to eat on that wood, beloved. It's the honey's bee's nature to make the honey. You can pray that the honey, st uh, the honey bee start making crude oil. <laughs> the honey bee ain't going to never produce crude oil. Not 100 years ago, not today, not 100 years from now. It's not the honey bee's nature to make crude oil. It's just the nature of the mischief maker to be mischievous. That's just his nature. Uh, let's take a look at CBS News, right? Let's take a look at the Cracker Broadcasting Station and see what they got. You know what I mean? Headline reads, Snoop Dogg sues Walmart and Post claiming they sabotage cereal brands, right? So we talking about a deal that two of our brothers from California, uh, one is a native of California, our brother Snoop Dogg. Then we got our brother Master P is an import, but he been in California uh, so long, over 30 years by way of Louisiana, that he is almost like, you know, a real Californian as well, right? Two brothers in business. Uh, they're both black entertainers. What did we say here about being in business and a black entertainer? What did we say here? <laughs> we got a formula here. Do that make us geniuses? <laughs> Does that make us geniuses because we know? No. Nah, 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 nah. History is best qualified to reward all our research. That's what the wise man said. Is that not right? So we just know, like, okay, we see y'all with the devil. And he got a formula he go by when he deal with black entertainers, and that is this. Well, you can have a company. You can have some money, but you ain't going to have them both. So... Where the devil like to keep our people is in the arena and area of marketing and promotion. Because you never own shit. Yeah, you can wear those Nikes. We'll give you a deal, but you never own them, motherfuckers. We'll give you a Reebok deal, but you never own them, motherfuckers. Know what I mean? I mean, we'll give you a Gatorade deal. We'll give you a McDonald's deal. I mean, yeah, we'll give you a bunch of deals in marketing and promotion. But when you want to do ownership, you're going to have a problem with us. Because the devil's nature is captivity. So how can you be, if you're in ownership, how can you be underneath him when you got your own thing? That's why he don't let you get your own thing. Right? You just got to know who you're dealing with. And it's, it's, you know, check this out. It's cool when you come to the podcast, you rock out with us. It's cool that you're listening. But this kind of shit, we got to be talking about in our own household. Our kids, our grandkids, our nieces and nephews, they got to know this old kind of shit. Like, yo, you're dealing with the devil? Get somebody to look over that contract two or three times. And make sure it's an original man in that deal structure. Because if you're just dealing with him straight up, that shit ain't going to be right. It's just his nature. It ain't going to never be right. Let's take a look. See what we got. Walmart and post-consumer brands undermine cereal brands created by Snoop Dogg and Master P by making them unaffordable and by keeping them hidden in stock rooms. 
a lawsuit filed by rappers claimed uh like we always do we're gonna put the link of this article in the description bar right okay so dig this now nah, dig this because i just want you to see what you're dealing with right two original men are, are saying that it's a funny style shit going on with arguably two billionaire companies right because i just want to set the table for you so you can just see what's really going on two billionaire companies right are working against a couple of millionaires to keep them from producing generational wealth because i don't want you to think you know you know because because see 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 this is the this is the problem with our village right here see we got this thing in our mind and i don't really know where this shit come from to be totally honest and transparent but we got this thing that see it was some old wicked crackers back in the day 16 17 18 hundreds and shit like that and when it got to the 1900s and the 2000 you know what this old them old crackers is dying out but lucky for us somehow it's some nigga loving crackers that's coming on the scene and they like rap and they like our music and they're gonna be different and they gonna be nothing like their forefathers and to that we say this beloved just because they like your music that don't mean shit those crackers always liked your music they like the music that you sung back in the fields in the 1600s they liked it then they danced to the shit that you made in the 1700s they boogie woogie to the shit that you made in the 1800s too that don't mean that they had no love for you it's not that's not their nature to love you 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 gotta stop talking it's it's a nature thing i, I had to learn that myself you know what i'm saying like it's <laughs> You know, once you got over a thousand recorded years of history and you act a certain way, this is how we judge animals. It's the nature of an animal that we've watched over time as humans. We study, say, okay, well, this is just a snake's nature. So I can clean out my fish tank right now, dump all the water out. I could put three or four mice in there. They're not going to do nothing but multiply. But if I throw a snake in there, what do you think is going to happen? Why do you know the answers to that already? Because history is best qualified to reward all our research. We know what's going to happen because we know the nature of the snake. So it doesn't make us uh, cruel people or some black supremacy kind of shit. Because we say, well, the snake is going to get in there <laughs> and just eat up the mice. Because that's the snake's nature. So the only salvation for the mice is separation. Because <laughs> the mice can't hang out with the snakes because their natures is too different if somebody come amongst you and tell you that beloved that's because <laughs> history is best qualified to reward all our research that's why they can tell you that see see snoop them ain't know that snoop them ain't know you know master p kind of should have known but snoop ain't know you know why master p should have known see them people fucked them before so we know Master P from what? No Limit Records, right? Independent Black owned. And he sold all these millions of records. And then what did they do to P ultimately? They fucked P, put him in debt, got the company. Well, I don't know if they got the company, but they got the masters. They got the master recordings from Dog. They made him cash out. Look, I'm gonna, uh, let's pivot. I'm going to tell you a quick story about Master P. See, this brother from the project did something that was almost unheard of, right? And he got amongst these small hats and devils and he did a deal. It was a PND deal. So when you seen a No Limit album back in the day, it was like an 85-15 split. That means P taking a lion's share of the money from selling the album, right? Okay, now I want you to hold that point. Now let's go back to the nature of the devil. Corruption, disproportion, captivity. All right, so let's go back to P's deal. 85-15, No Limit Records, right? He sell an album. He get 85% of the money. The distributed company get 15%, right? Dig that. So what they did was this to break P. They start looking at the metrics and they notice for well, shit, P keep going gold and platinum. Gold and platinum, gold and platinum. So what they start doing was, okay, instead of shipping gold and platinum what his numbers normally do they start shipping two three million out so this is the play 
even though he can sell platinum, they're pressing up 2 million, 3 million copies, and then those albums are being returned back to the stores and they're charging people for them now. So instead of them just pressing up a million copies and him selling out the million copies and doing well, no, they're going to print out double, triple the amount, put them out of all the stores, and then he's going to make money from selling all these all these hundreds of thousands of records. But the ones that don't sell, they're going to ship back. They charge people. That's how he got in debt. That's what that's what these people do. So he had to cash out, and that's why he don't own the mass recordings to his shit no more. His shit been gone. See, that's you're dealing with the devil. What are you? Nobody's. We're not shocked. P probably was shocked. All right, now he's on his second time around. <laughs> We're gonna read this article. He's on the second time around with dealing with these folks. Let's see if they did anything different, right? How about we do that? Post agreed to make and distribute Snoop Serial and Mama Snoop under phony pretenses after the rappers rejected the retail giants offered to buy their company outright, according to the suit filed by Broadcus Foods. All right, uh, check it out. Let's talk about that. Let's cook with that a little bit. This is what Brodus Foods is saying, right? Brodus or Brodus. Uh, before they even got their company off the ground, the folks tried to buy it from my right. Why? Why they want to buy something from you? All right, you ain't even got this shit off the ground. This shit ain't even five years old. Because they can print the money up. They can print it up in hand to see. There's no problem. Ownership? No, niggas is not to have no ownership in nothing. Because ownership, it takes you away from captivity. That's why we talk so much about family and farming equal finances over here. If you know how to work the land, shit, what the fuck you need anybody for? You don't need nobody for that. But no, they don't want you working the land. They want you dependent on them. They want you being a slave and a servant. And then when you want to make big money, market and promotion. Not ownership, just market and promotion. You want to hand some shit down to your kids, kids, kids? No, that's not for niggas. That's for them. That's that's the hustle. That's that's the devil. The cereal brand was founded by Calvin Broadus, otherwise known as Snoop Dogg, and No Limit Records founder Percy Miller, known as Master P, to pass it on to their children in states. Uh, you in a deal with the devil? Well, good luck with that. After entering a profit sharing agreement that had posts making and distributing the cereals, the pair found, quote, Post was not on board with their goals and dreams and had no intention of treating Snoop cereal equally as its own brands, unquote. Let's start, let's cook on that. Uh, how did the devil gonna have your goals and dreams? Because that's that was a very powerful quote, unquote. Why did you think as an original man, your enemy got the same goals and dreams that you got for your brand, your idea, how could that be, bro? How, how could that be? Your goal and dream is to pass generational wealth down and your kids' kids. That's not his dream for you. Oh, he finna fuck up the business real quick now because he don't want you to have that. Now, let's pivot. Let's talk about another black entertainer. Who does that sound like? Don't that sound like Diddy all over again? Don't that sound like Sean Combs all over again? Long as Sean Combs was with Ciroc, he is getting a nigga check. And marketing promotion. They loved him. Man, they loved him some Diddy. Man, they loved that old nigga get on that stage and shucking and jiving. And Clive in the back now. He ain't getting on stage. Well, they love to see Diddy on that stage shucking and jiving and all that shit. And he going on tour at 50. And they love that shit. They love to see Jay-Z on stage. But then what happened? When Diddy said, well, okay. We made you a lot of money for Ciroc. How about when I get Diego? And I have 100% ownership in the brand. I want you to continue to distribute this Diego like you did when I was doing it for Ciroc. And what happened? Not so. Not so. Why? Because it's your shit, nah. Nah, we don't. Why would I put your shit, uh, Sean Combs, Diego, why would I put your, teque your tequila ahead of all these other folks? Because I know these other folks. See, let me tell y'all something. See, business is warfare, right? These companies are owned by families. They know these other cracker families. These cracker know these other cracker families. 
They don't know your family. They know each other. And Heiser Bush, beloved, is a family. Kellogg, when you start making up, that's a family. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when you pick up the Mars bars and Snicker bars, those products is owned by a family. You know what I mean? Hennessy is a family. Uh, Jack Daniels is a family from Lord and Tennessee. These are families that do all this kind of shit that own these companies. When you see all these products, products on these shelves of Myers and Super Targets and goddamn Walmart, and these are all cracker families up there. That's not your family products up there. That's their families up there. So why would he turn around, Sean Combs? And, so what did Sean Combs do? He said, well, I'm going to put a lawsuit on racism on your ass. And then what happened? Now, all of a sudden, this is when the Cassie shit come out. Not before, beloved. After. After the Diego lawsuit, this is where that faucet got turned on. And what did we say? That motherfucking faucet not getting turned off. See, those crackers got the money to use you against you because they already know you. They got the money to... Uh, pay private eyes and to, to follow you all day and get the dirty laundry on you and to, to break you down because see they use the media as a tool to destroy your image all the time that's not nothing new they do this all the time they've been doing this shit yo dig this many of us gonna sleep good tonight right no matter how many bombs they drop on Palestine tonight if they drop some bombs in Iran, they drop some bombs in Iraq, we're going to sleep good. If they drop some bombs in Afghanistan, we're still going to sleep good because we are taught as a quote-unquote Judeo-Christian society that, man, them folks are infidels and they're terrorists anyway. So they vilify you before they kill you. Now, we're not looking at it like, damn, three-year-olds going to catch the bomb, be affected, seven-year-olds going to be affected. You know, 15 year olds, teenagers, life's not gonna be the same, young adults not gonna be the same. We don't even care. Because we praying and Oz Lord are gonna give us a new car and a new house and a new washing dryer. Cause this is ah, high glory. This is he working, right? <laughs> he's working, right? He he's working, right? So we don't care about what happens to humanity. Because our guy helping us get this new degree and this new car. And in the vision, I didn't see peace. I seen a new home. And I'm seeing all this shit on stolen land. Imagine that. But beloved, maybe that's a different story for a different day. Right? Let's see what else we got. Posts. Quote unquote, ensure that Snoop cereal would be would not be available to consumers or that it would incur exorbitant costs that would eliminate any profit from broadest foods. Let's go down to the craziest part in the article, man. I seen this shit. I was like, bro, stop the press. I went into my Jerome mode. Stop the press. Many Walmart stores show online and in Walmart employees' in-store applications that Snoop cereal was sold out or out of stock, states the complaint. Let's stop. Shout out to the black man and woman at Walmart. That's how our brothers found out. Boots on the ground. Our people blew the whistle. Did you, did you catch that? It was our people that blew the whistle. Listen, listen, listen to the second line. However, upon further investigation by store employees, however, upon further investigation by store employees, each of these stores had several boxes of Snoop cereal in their stock rooms that were called it to not be put out on the store shelves. That's an unquote. Again, shout out to our people, boots on the ground or blowing a whistle. Shout out to, what is that? What is that? Shipping and receiving. Shout out to our shipping and receiving department, right? That's checking in the truck drivers, pulling them pallets off the truck. And then the goddamn devil saying, hey, what's that pallet? Put that shit to the side. We ain't going to sell that. Yet, when the customers come up and ask about the cereal, oh, it's, it's, it's sold out. It's sold out. And they're like, damn, motherfucker, we don't even see it. Well, where was it going to be at on the shelf? Where's the slide at? We ain't got the slide out there, but it's sold out. It's not sold out. So, do you see what's going on? You missed it. I keep repeating it, and I'm going to keep repeating it. Two billionaire companies 
are working together to make sure the black brand doesn't take off. Them people study us, beloved. They know we really support our own. They say, man, you know, them niggas don't support each other. Let me tell you something. I never seen a black man or a woman with bootleg CDs go without. I never seen nobody that's selling fish plates or food plates go without. All these rib joints been around here forever. These barbershops been around here forever. These hair salons been around here forever. Whatever we do, comedy, whatever we do, trades, electricians, plumbers, we support each other. They know that. They, they're not stupid. They, they have to put the rumor mill out that we don't support each other. We support each other. Because the minute Kanye left, we don't buy that shit no more. We stop buying that shit. Because we support our own. Well, that's they know that. They know this kind of shit. They also know another thing about our people. They know this. They know that our people is monkey see, monkey do. See, this is the biggest problem with letting black folks, especially black entertainers, go into ownership. Because, again, our people is monkey see, monkey do. If Master P and Snoop Dogg put some shit on the shelves and that shit take off, what do you think going to happen after that? What do you think gonna happen after that? It's gonna be a chain reaction of black entertainers going into business, getting their own shit. You know what that means? Employment for us. That's what that means. They know that. So two billionaire companies is working together to stop you. So I don't never want you to think them people your friend. I say it again. Two billionaire companies, which is billionaire families with yachts and property and houses all over the world, is making a plan that two rappers won't have generational wealth. That's just millionaires. You have to let that shit set in. Now, out of all our studies, history is best qualified to reward our research. Snoop got to be careful. You see what happened to Diddy, right? Okay. Snoop got to be careful. Not necessarily Master P, but because Master P already divorced. He's a single man. He's a grinder. He can kind of, he going to navigate. But Snoop got a wife. And then Snoop got, uh, how can I, Snoop? <laughs> Snoop kind of got like this, this weed image. And Master P don't got that. Master P got a clean image. He ain't got no weed image. He got a clean image, right? He's he's a, he's a sharp brother. The uh, how can I say it? Like, like check this out, my nigga. And I'm talking to Snoop. You don't never let them crackers have uh, uh have your vice being known to the whole world, because now you know I got I look at it this way. Well, they gonna put some private eyes on you. Because they're going to destroy your image because they work with the press. So, you know, Snoop, you got a wife, bro. So when you put a lawsuit out on Walmart, you know, and Post, you know, these private eyes going to be following you around. And they're going to be going through your, your whoever you think is tight-knit to find some dirt on you that they can put it out to ruin your name. Look what they doing to Diddy. Boy, that faucet is on. They're not going to turn that motherfucker off. They're going to keep draining blood, draining blood, draining blood. They finna fuck, dog. It's, it's over with. No pun intended. I don't know. Diddy kind of wild. Maybe pun intended. But it's going down over there, bro. Pun intended. <laughs> it's going down over there with Diddy. You know what I mean? You don't want them to take pictures of, you know, you got to be living a holy and clean life. And, just and, and we praying it don't happen, if 200 pounds of weed just so happen to be in your car when the highway patrol pull you over, you know, 500 pounds of weed just happen to be in your private jet, the whole world gonna believe it because that's the image that you gave the whole world that you smoked dope and you kicking it see we gonna know something funny if they find something in Peacock cause we know P don't live that kind of life he never lived that life in front of the public even as a quote unquote gangster rapper he just never did that shit you do it Snoop so if uh, his mistress just fall out of the sky all of a sudden and you know uh, something going on with his children all of a sudden uh, you know, he, he get caught with some kind of drugs. All of a sudden, we know that Walmart put them people on you. We know that the Post, beloved, put them people on you. That's why it's important that you live a holy and clean life. 
This last paragraph, we're going to close out because this one is a goddamn kicker. The decision to price the cereal at more than $10 a box often conflicted with the goals of Broadest Foods or Broadest Foods, however you pronounce it, to offer affordable food, claim the rappers who are represented by LA attorney Ben Crump. All right, let's stop there. Let's stop there. Let's stop there. God damn it. Who's going to buy a $10 cereal? Nobody. That my key sweat voice. Who gonna buy ten dollars? Nobody. Ain't nobody beloved gonna buy that shit. Guess who knows that? Your enemy knows that. I don't give a fuck what Shamika got on her EBT card. She ain't gonna eat that up with that high ass cereal. Ten dollar box of cereal. Why though? If that ain't some sinister shit, what is? If this ain't the mischief maker at work, beloved, what is? Oh, man, that man ain't the devil. Well, shit, who is? <laughs> that nigga strong number two. <laughs> if this cracker ain't the devil, he's a strong goddamn number two candidate. I can tell you that much. I'm like, it's like a goddamn, it's a neck and neck, it's like a photo finish. Like, he coming through that goddamn, uh, you know, <laughs> know what I'm saying? You know, when the race gets so close, they'll go down to a photo finish. Because I know they got the invisible, they put the invisible devil on y'all. It's this motherfucker, invisible devil, I just he's everywhere. And, uh -huh, and yeah, I get it. But this guy on top of the ground, <laughs> he's giving this invisible devil a run for his money. But our people must know that this man is nothing but the devil. Uh, check it out. I was gonna close out. Let me tell a story. How about we do? How about we go back and do a history story, right? I just wanna, you know, something comes to mind when I read this article, and uh, I want you to always keep this on the forefront, right, of your thinking. Business is warfare. And then in the middle, right in the center, where everything is coming from, coming from the innermost working outward, I want you to just always remember and remind yourself to remind yourself that the white man is the devil. Right? Um, there's a beautiful sister in our legacy. Right? We've been blessed to have a queen mother from our village. And her name is Ida B. Wells. Uh, how many of you guys know Ida B. Wells? Because I know you know Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. I know you know that, right? I know I know you know Mary Magdalene and all that. I know you got all that down pat. Do you know Ida B. Wells from your village? Do you know her? Do you know her legacy? Right? What is Ida B. Wells? Peace be upon her. She's no longer here. What is she known for? Because when I read this article, Ida B. Wells came to mind. I was like, damn, you know, history is quality. That's what the a wise man said, right? History, 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 qualifications, our research. That is beloved. That is a that is a very that's a very powerful thought. We got to work on these thoughts and perfect them, perfect them, perfect them, add on, add on. Of all of our studies. Of all of our studies, history is best qualified to reward our research. History is best qualified to reward our research. Um, Ida B. Wells, beautiful sister, powerful sister, and it's a, a powerful brother. His name was Booker T. Washington, right? We're going to take it back to the early 1900s, right? In the year 1900 itself, there were 20,000 black-owned businesses in the United States Incorporated, right? Okay. Our beloved brother, now ancestor, Booker T. Washington, he uh, put together an organization It was called the National Negro Business League, right? He founded it in Boston, and uh, he used this vehicle to kind of like promote black-owned businesses all throughout america so they used to have these meetings right they used to go like uh to chicago and they'd go to the south and 
what this outfit was was it was a way that it was like you know teaching our people about business starting businesses and if necessary they'll provide uh the national negro business league will provide the finances you know what i'm saying to get the business up and going so ida b wells at that time was in the mix but our sister from memphis you know what i mean all right there's a cracker in memphis and he was a grocery store owner his name was william barrett right and william barrett uh a uh, barrett i should say he's a, a white grocery store owner and he served the community both black and white because he had the only game in town you dig but you know again going back to the nnbl or the national negro business league they was just doing so much work that they was inspiring entrepreneurship for my people so a brother was inspired named thomas moss and thomas moss he put together a grocery store and it was called the people's grocery store and he had a couple of co-workers with him right some associates calvin and will now when the original man put his store around the corner from the devil's store the devil william barrett got jealous right but why did he get jealous this is nature corruption captivity this portion is going to follow them people everywhere they go now these devils got the whole planet they stole the whole planet if not the whole planet three-fourths of the planet for sure yet when little low you just get a grocery store you're gonna have a problem with him because you can empower your own and then not only are you empowering your own your own is coming to do business with you so the people or our people that used to go and spend their money with the cracker in memphis they didn't go over there no more they didn't go to the, the barrett store they went to thomas store they went to the brother store to spend their hard-earned money all right so one day in front of the store some black and white teenagers out there in front playing marbles right in front of the black owned store the people's grocery store and it was like a little altercation to happen in front of the store the devil that's the competitor uh barrett he's seen this as an opportunity to go down to law enforcement and complain that the black owned store the people's grocery store was a nuisance and there's always some shit going on there and he used this to push and get together a mob to put these brothers out of business so while he's down there working on the mob and law enforcement in connection with the press the brothers never knew it so they armed themselves they got ready and when that white mob came down to the store they supposed to be law enforcement but they came in plain clothes when they came down to the store thomas and them couldn't do nothing but defend themselves them property they opened up fire right hitting these devils shooting them down whatever they eventually was you know arrested put in jail and while in jail a wicked white mob came and broke into jail took thomas out took calvin out took will out hung him and killed him then they went back to the store looted the store took everything that was there destroyed the whole thing and then they put it out in the paper about what happened this is the brilliance of our beloved sister ida b wells because not only was she from memphis when she read the story she knew it was fugazi she knew thomas personally and then the our, this is our sisters right here our beautiful sister ida b wells our women the black woman mother of civilization right this <laughs> beloved 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 mother of the earth god of the universe the original woman she did her due diligence in research and what she began to see as a journalist was when there was a lynching in south carolina or north carolina or georgia or florida or alabama or mississippi or texas or wherever because of the way that the press did thomas moss her friend she noticed it was a trend see at that time when you seen or heard about a black man being lynched it was always connected to a so-called white woman oh he raped the white woman or he assaulted the right woman or he stole from the right one it was something and then the story would go the black man was lynched he was hung he was killed that's how the press okay 
But what our beloved sister, though, Ida B. Wells figured out was she started doing the research on the men that were lynched, on the men that was cute behind the story. And what she seen was it was a big play that was working together. It was no white woman being raped. It was no white woman being assaulted. It wasn't no white woman being robbed. They was using these lynches to kill business owners, black business owners, land owners. If you didn't want to come off the land, they'll make a bullshit story about you and they'll kill you. But if the public read the story and they say, well, Charlie raped such and such and you die, they say, well, it's justified. If, if Charlie stole from something, it is just justified. But because the devil was the law enforcement and he was the mob and he was the press, it was all fugazi. But she knew it. She figured it out. She figured the Bro, I just want... We got it. Let's, let's, look, look, look. Let's take some time and let's cook on the genius of the black American woman. She put this... There was no internet... There was not, she just did the real leg work and put it all together that it was Fugazi. She, Ida B. Wells, was the first person to notice the, she, she noticed the trend that lynching was connected to the economic means of keeping black folks down. She did that. Nobody else did that. The, sister, the queen mother did that. The mother of civilization did that. Our sister did that. So what are you saying, V? I don't care if it was a hundred years ago in the 1900s. The devil is going to be the devil regardless of time and place. He haven't changed. You praying for the nigga loving cracker to come. He ain't coming, beloved. He ain't coming. And I don't care how many stories you read about some people in the fiery furnace and all this and no no when they put that rope around our people neck it worked no it worked when they pull those guns on our people and they pull that trigger it worked no matter what name we screamed out called out and these men were innocent men we talking about thomas and calvin and will they were just defending their property them store themselves they had babies on the way they was honest square dealing original men and their lives was taken behind business and the people that killed them they never went to jail but this is business with these people because it's warfare with those people you they ain't gonna never beloved they don't want to see they're not going to change they don't they, if you're not in captivity they don't want you around them this whole idea that this is going to be an equal America and you're going to go up the, uh, the ladder of capitalism and be an owner. And it, no, it's not fixed for you to do that. They're against you 100 years from now. Right now, I had to I had to show you the Ida B. Wells story. I know you didn't know. <laughs> you can tell me all about Muhammad from 1400 years ago. You can give me all those stories and the trees is moving and all that. You can give me them stories and you can give me the story how you went. With them saying niggas and you walked around the, the, the black stone you give me all them stories but you can't when it's time to tell me your own story you don't know your own story right you can give me the the, the Bilalian story and how uh Jabril came and you can give me all that brother hmm you can give me the the uh who sold Joseph to the, this whole you can give me the mythos right and then while you got so much mythos, when you go to the table to do a business deal, you're thinking, oh, this guy went from Ohio State. He went to LSU. He went to Cal, SoCal. He went to USC. He went to Florida State. Oh, he all right. He went to Michigan State, Ohio State. He's okay. He went to Syracuse. And you don't even know, man, that's the bigger, that's the same enemy today that your people's dealing with 100 years from now. He just going to economically lynch you now. He just put you on a real rope back then. So your salvation is what? Well, you got to separate from dog. You can't be around dog. You can't put the mice in the same vicinity as the snakes. And you're going to pray. you praying the snake. Don't you know the snake. Don't. I don't care how hard are you praying, beloved. You can throw some oil on in on that snake. <laughs> you know what that snake going to be? That snake going to be a snake. He, don't, he doesn't have a choice. And, beloved, I'm going to leave you with this so we're going to close out. The same for the wolf. It's the same for the snake. You can't do that with a wolf. You can't lay your hands on the wolf and pray that the wolf changes and try to run a revival to change the wolf and 
cast out the demon and the wolf and you know preach to the wolf to get the wolf to walk upright it's not in that wolf's nature to walk upright so you as original people must deal with these wolves like the indigenous people of this land dealt with the wolves in the ancient days right so i'm gonna give you a formula and i'm gonna tell you what they did and when you listen to what they did it is the secret of what we must do the way that indigenous people used to kill wolves is like so they would take a knife they would take a long knife and what they would do is they would put rabbit's blood or any animal's blood all on top of the blade part of the knife and they would stick that knife in the snow or they would stick that knife in the ground the bottom part right but they would make sure that that blood was all over the blade part that wolf would smell the blood and the wolf thinking it is a prey not really knowing because it's an object but the wolf can smell that blood so the first thing the wolf would do because the wolf the wolf is addicted to blood it stick his tongue out beloved and try to lick the blood off the blade but in the process of licking the blood off the blade the wolf is cutting his own tongue but the wolf is nature is so aggressive it doesn't know so it just sees more and more blood so the the wolf doesn't know it's his own blood now but it's just in his own nature and it's licking it's licking it's licking on the blade but the more that it licks on the blade the more it's killing itself until it ultimately dies beloved so what are you saying beloved this is what i'm saying this is why i say on this platform getting married is a revolutionary act that's number one and our only salvation is separation number two because a wolf nature is always going to be the same whether you're there or you're not so remove yourself from the equation stay away from dog just stay away from dude because if you stay away from him all he's going to do is turn on his own and destroy himself but if you're there and you hanging around and you at the table you say, I, I want to sit at the table yeah well you're at your lunch <laughs> you see the table. You're going to be ref as lunch and dinner. But if you say, nah, I'm just going to do my own table, huh? You hang out with your own brothers. They're not going to do nothing. But do what wolves do when they smell blood on the blade is just destroy themselves. And our prayer is that they do what is in their nature to do. And then we'll leave it there. Peace and black power to your family. Beloved, we thank you guys so much for listening and hanging out. This is indeed Real Black Content Form Podcast. Man, it's your brother V. You know what I mean? I'm going to get it with you guys later. Peace, peace, beloved, and more peace. Hey, brothers and sisters, you all know we just filed a lawsuit on behalf of Broadest Foods that was co founded by Snoop Dogg and Master P against Walmart and Post because these brothers created this Black-owned product from this Black-owned company, and yet they would not put the cereal on the aisles. They kept them in the back of the storeroom. And so we want to ask you all to help us with the Snoop Cereal Challenge. Go to Walmart and other grocery stores and videotape the cereal aisle and send it to me and Snoop Dogg and Master P on your social media accounts. Master P said it best. This isn't about him and Snoop. This is about the brothers and sisters who have Black-owned businesses who are going to get disenfranchised just like them. They said if it can happen to them, two of the biggest names in the community, then what good can regular brothers and sisters do in this fight? We all in this together. Thanks for listening. Remember to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, 
YouTube, Google, Anchor, Spotify and Facebook. Also, don't forget to like, share, and comment on the podcast. Your opinion of what you just heard is important to the platform. So yes, beloved, your comments are the engine and fuel to the machine. Stay blessed and have a powerful day.